Good evening. Thomas Cantu, associate pastor here at Southside Baptist Church. Just want to welcome you to the Wednesday night Bible study, David and Goliath, Pursuing Your Giants. Tonight we're going to be in 1 Samuel 17. The main verse we'll be on is uh, 17, verse 37. Uh, and I, first of all, I just want to thank you all for letting us into your house tonight to, to watch the message tonight and just pray that God blesses you with us tonight. Um, right now we're facing a pandemic that's, you know, global, huge, right? About 213 countries or territories that have been affected by this. By the time you hear this video, it'll probably be a little bit over 14 million cases worldwide. 604, 693 deaths at this point. Uh, so it's a huge problem, you know, global. Uh, and it's something that brings uncertainty into our lives. I mean, you see our lives changing daily because of this thing. Uh, and you see the effect that it has on the economy, you know, the, the markets, uh, how it affects our lives and how it affects the safety and the health of, of us individually, and then our families and our loved ones. It's a huge problem. It's a big problem. And it's bigger than anything that any individual, any of us could do anything to change or any group can do anything to change. It's going to take a whole you know, world working together, but it's going to take something more than that. It's going to take something like God. God's the one who has the power. You know, we, we can do our, our part, you know, the social distancing, the mask, uh, uh, you know, do our part to help slow the spread. But ultimately, it comes to God. God coordinated us all to work together. God to step in and do something. It, it's in his hands. This is a big giant. Um, but, you know, a lot of you, you know, we, we go through the, we're going through this and trying to deal with it. But a lot of us, we have other big giants that we're dealing with in our lives. You know, in our individual lives, we face all kinds of giants. You know, and they appear to be giants in our lives based on, you know, what we think we can handle or we can't handle or what the world has to say about what, we, what we're facing. A lot of times we forget when we're looking at those giants, when we're looking at our problems, we forget that we, that we serve a God as Christians, that we serve a God who created the heavens and earth. You know, he created this whole system, the whole universe, how everything works together and keeps us balanced to maintain this life on this earth, on this planet. When you stop and think about everything that goes in to the earth just being in the right position, the winds, the water, uh, and how, how the whole ecosystem works together... The God who created that, the God who put all that together, is the very God that we can go to with our, with our prayers, with our problems. When we have giants in our lives that are, that are holding us back or that are obstacles that are keeping us from getting closer to God or that are keeping us from getting to, to our goals, keeping us from being witnesses, you know, when those giants come in, we forget that we serve that God who can overcome those. We serve that God who overcame death, the cross, because of your sin, because of my sin, that he loved us that much. So he's got that much power and he's got that love for us. But yet, when we face the giants, we seem to sometimes forget. And we take our focus off of Jesus and we start to focus on the problem. And a lot of times when we do that, that problem even seems even bigger. So let's talk about facing giants tonight. 1 Samuel chapter, 7, verse, chapter 17, verse 37. It says, David said, moreover, the Lord that delivered me out of the paw of the lion and out of the paw of the bear, he will deliver me out of the hand of this Philistine. And then Saul said unto David, go and the Lord be with thee. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Lord, first of all, we just thank you for this evening. Lord, we thank you for the time that you've given to us to come here tonight to study this, Lord. We thank you for your word that you've given us a word to study. We thank you for your son going to the cross. We thank you for the grace and mercy that you give us daily, Lord. But Lord, we want to take this time that you've given to us and turn it back to you, Lord. And I pray that you would take this time in our lives and that you will speak to us tonight, that you will give us courage and, and boldness to face the giants that we face, that you will give us the strength. And Lord, I pray that you, you hide me behind the cross. Let, let it not be just my message or my opinion, Lord, but let it be your message. Let it be your words, which you have to say to us tonight, Lord. Just get me out of the way and let it be all about you, Lord. Lord, we thank you and we love you. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. So we see David here looking back, you know, just from the scripture alone, he, how he looks back and he reflects back on how God had delivered him from past obstacles, from past challenges or dangers, and how he delivered him. 
from that situation or those situations and now how God's going to deliver him from this new situation that's coming up that he's going to be facing right here, right now. You know, David being, you know, he's the youngest out of eight brothers, son of Jesse, the youngest of those. Three of them were out to battle and David was back home. He stayed there. He took care of his father's sheep and, and whatever else, other chores that his dad had for him there. But he did that. And, and as they're out there getting ready to go to battle, there's some things going on there on the battlefield uh, against the Philistines. And this giant comes out there. He's a nine-foot giant. He's approximately nine feet. And imagine, much taller than my, myself. And he comes out there and he tells them, he goes, instead of us battling, he says, come out there, send one of your men down. Choose one of your men to come and fight me. He says, and if your men, if your man can come down and can fight me and can kill me, our people will be as servants to your people. He says, but if not, he says, if I kill your man, then your, your people will be servants to my people. To, so the Israelites should be servants to the Philistines. And of course, all the other men that saw this guy and they heard these words, they were scared, right? So meanwhile, back, while David's back at, back at the ranch, you could say, he, his dad tells him, he gets some bread ready, to take these loaves, take this cheese, take these things down to the campment where your brothers are camped at. Take them over there, give them these things, find out how they're doing, get the update. So while David's there, he's over there, he's talking to them, giving them the stuff, the food, and talking to them. Here comes this giant again, Goliath. He comes again, and he repeats the same words, you know. He goes, send somebody, choose one of your men and send down to fight. And all the other men, are, they're, they're ready to run. They're scared. They don't want to face this giant because he's huge. Not only is he huge, but he has all this armor, this brass, brass on, his helmet, his, his breast shield, and, and, and you know, the, the whole nine yards, and his weapons, his sword, his spirit. Uh, so they're scared of him, and they're, they're ready to run. But David, remember David, this little scrawny guy, he's a youth who takes care of the, his father's sheep. He hears this giant. And he's not scared of this giant. His response when he hears what's going on, he says, who is this uncircumcised Philistine? He's talking about this huge giant. He says, who's that uncircumcised Philistine that he should defy the armies of God? In other words, he's not going to go against God. It doesn't matter how big he is. He can't go against him. Who is he? And his words and his boldness, you know, his brothers hear that and they say, you need to go back home because, you know, he's going to get himself killed out there in their eyes. Or maybe he's just going to get out there and embarrass them. I don't know exactly what was going through their mind, but they, they wanted him to be gone. But David, he, he, he was bold and said, no, I, I can take this, you know, because he trusted in God. And the word gets back to Saul. They tell Saul what David had said. And uh, to Saul, he says, and David said to Saul, let no man's heart fail because of him. Thy servant will go and fight with this Philistine. So David, putting himself out there, says, don't worry about this. I got this. And imagine... The scene here, here you had this huge giant out there, nine foot tall, full of armor. He, he was um, in the military, in the army f since he was a youth, so he knows war. And here you have this little guy, he says, I got this. I got this. Pretty, pretty brave there. And Saul tells him, no, David, you can't do this. He, you know, he, he's been in, in war since he was a youth. He's bigger than you. He's got all the, the armor. And, and you, again, it just doesn't make sense. But David explained to him something. He says, when I was taking care of my father's sheep, he says, a lion came by, a bear came by, they took the lamb away, and his job was just to protect that lamb. So he went and he said he took that lamb out of their mouth. He, he saved that lamb. And then when they turned to, to, uh, to eat him, whatever they were going to do to him, he, got him, he says he got him by the beard and he slayed him. And he says, because God had delivered him. So the Lord delivered me out of the paw of the lion and out of the paw of the bear, and he will deliver me out of the hands of this Philistine. In other words, he looked back and said, God got me from that situation. Now God's going to get me through this situation. And that's when Saul said, okay, go. So he goes out there and he, he, goes, to, he goes to battle him and he's looking at this huge giant. And, and by the way, a little piece I oh, oh, don't want to forget to leave out is, is he tries to put on his armor, David, tries to put on the armor that he has as a soldier and carry his sword and, and all those things, he couldn't even do that because they were too big for him. 
said he, he had swayed, and as he tried to walk, but he couldn't even walk with him. So he took him off. So he's going out there, just, just him, right? And he's going out there to face this huge, huge giant. So this giant, he looks at him, he belittles him. He says, who are you? This little guy, you, you think you're going to take me down? You're not going to be able to do that. You're nothing. But David faces that giant. And he says this to the giant. He says, Thou comest to me with a sword, and with a spear, and with a shield. But I come to thee in the name of the Lord of hosts, and the God of the armies of Israel, who thou hast defied. In other words, he says, You have all this armory. You have all these weapons. You have everything there. You got size. You got stature. He says, I got God. And you defied God. So I'm going to have victory. Pretty bold. And he would do it for a purpose because he goes on in verse 46. It says, And all the earth may know that there is a God in Israel. Let me read that whole verse to you. And here, here's, here's little David looking up to Goliath. It says, This day will the Lord deliver thee into mine hands, and I will smite thee and take thine head from thee, and I will give the carcasses to the host of the Philistines this day unto the fowls of the air and to the wild beasts of the earth. And get this that all the earth may know that there is a God in Israel. So you see, first of all, he stepped out in faith, and he was doing it to bring glory to God. He said, so all, all the world would know, all the earth would know that there was a God. And then the giant comes towards David. You know, I'm sure he's looking down and saying, what is this nonsense you're talking about? He didn't believe, he didn't believe in David's God. And he comes towards him. And David, instead of running the other way, he runs towards him as he's coming to him. And he reaches in, he gets, his, he gets out one stone, he puts it in his sling, and he slings it. Hits him right in the forehead. The giant goes down, bites the dust. And keep in mind, David had no, that's all he had. So he goes up there and he gets on top of the giant. He pulls out his sword. He fix, finishes him off right there. He, defeat, he just defeated that giant, the giant that was too big to him, too big for him, according to man's eyes. You see, as he defeated that giant, he looked back. One of the things I want to point out is he looked back on the experiences that he had. You know, sometimes we got to stop and look back how God helped us in our life. You know, we, we look back and we see how God got us through certain situations. Uh, and by that, we can look forward and say, well, God got me through this. You know, David says, God delivered me from that tiger. He got he, from that lion. He delivered me from that bear. Now this Philistine, he's going to deliver me from him too. Because David had that kind of faith. That's the kind of faith we need to have where we can look back and we can see where God helped us through our situations and know that he will continue to help us. But it's got to start somewhere. We've got to start with faith. You know, at some point in our life, we've got to step out in faith and just trust God. And sometimes it's with the little things, the little, situation, the little situations that we'll face, the hurdles, the, the obstacles that get in the way. And we got to stop and say, okay, you know what? God's going to get me through this. And we step out in faith and we get through that. What's going to happen is when you have faith with him on the small things, he's going to give you something bigger the next time. Something bigger the next time. But what happens is we begin to build up uh, that track record of the faith and we see how God can deliver. We see how God can work in our lives, how he can give us victory when we put him first, when we're seeking to glorify his name and do what he wants to serve him. See, we've got to be doing it for the right reason and we've got to take that action. And David, he looked back. Remember this. So look back in your life and see how God delivered you from the last giant that you faced. Maybe it was a small giant. Maybe it was just not even a giant at that point. But look back and see how God answered your prayer. How he got you through a situation. Or maybe he didn't answer the prayer because that wasn't the right prayer. But he got you through to the next day because you're still here. And know that he will deliver you and that he will get you through the next situation. And see, as we go forward and we, we, we begin to face new giants that are coming up in our lives, it takes action. Because David, imagine David, he could have just sat there and said, okay, God, I know God's got this. I have faith in you, God. But see, faith requires some action. Because he could have said, yeah, God, I have, I have faith. I know you'll get me through this. 
I know you're going to deliver, so I'm going to go sit over here and I'm going to wait and see what you're going to do. That's not what David did. Or when David saw the giant running towards him, he didn't say, okay, God, I know you got this, so I'm going to go ahead and go over here and watch what you do. No, so he said, a lot of times God's going to use you to face that giant. He's going to use you to overcome the obstacles. He's going to give you that experience of having that victory. With David, he didn't go back and sit on the sidelines and wait and see what happened. David knew he was being called to go out there. David knew that his God, our God, would deliver him. So he stepped out and he put his faith to action. We've got to put our faith to action. If we don't put our faith to action, then why is it, how do we call it faith? Faith is going to require that we do something, that we step out and do something. Yeah, sure, there'll be times where God says, your faith, I want you just to wait. That's why we need to be prayed up. We need to be in His Word, in tune with the Spirit. So we can know when God's saying, go, attack now, or when God's saying, wait a minute. Because sometimes He's going to tell us to wait. Other times He's going to say, charge. And we have to look back and say, okay, God got me through it. I'm going. I'm going to defeat this because God is a good God. God is the one who can deliver me from this situation. So it's going to take action. It's going to take putting that faith into action and actually doing something with it. He had faith that he would be delivered. So what obstacles do you face today? What, what challenges, what giants are between you and God? What giants are keeping you from moving closer to God? What giants are keeping you from moving forward? Maybe, maybe it's in getting a job. Or maybe it's dealing with a family issue, a relationship. What giants are in their way? Because whatever those giants are, we need to take them to God. Say, God, I need you to help me with this situation. And how do we do that? First of all, prayer. Second of all, get into His Word. You know, I want to give you the challenge for this week to find out what your giants are. What is it that's keeping you from moving forward? What's holding you back? What are you afraid of? Look at that giant in the face. Look in God's Word and say, Okay, God, what do you have for me? What words do you have that can help me deal with my giant? And get in there. And read it. But don't just read it. Read it and apply it. Read it and ask God, God, what does this mean to me? How can I change my life by reading this word? How can I use these scriptures to face my giants? Ask Him that. Seek that out. Read it and apply it to your life. Not just read it into your mind, but down into your heart. And then take that action of faith, of stepping out, wherever God has called you to do, through His word and prayer, and step out in that faith. And be, be willing to take a chance. David took a chance. David, in a sense, he was putting his life on the line. But he was so confident in God, I don't think he really looked, looked at it as taking a chance. I think he looked at it as being obedient. God used him to save the Israelites at that moment, to do something that big. So keep this in mind. No matter how small you think you are compared to your problems, no matter how weak you think you are compared to your problems, remember this, it's not you. It's God. When we surrender it to God, when we're, we're in His will, living our lives in His will, let's get all this straight, going by His word, living our lives the way He tells us to, and being obedient to Him when He calls us to action. When we do those things, He's going to be there, and He's going to get us through in His timing and in His way, and it takes us act, acting in faith. So look at those giants and say, you know what? God's got this, and I'm going to follow through. I'm going to trust and I'm going to obey. And watch the things that He can do in your life. So your challenge, look at your, your giants this week. Look them in the face. Get into God's Word and get ready to face those giants and get ready to experience a victory and give that glory to God and use that in some way to be a witness to somebody. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Dear Lord, we thank You for this evening. Lord, we thank You for the time that You've given us tonight here, Lord, to be into your word, Lord. I pray that this word does not go void, but that it will encourage somebody that's facing a problem right now, whether it will encourage them to face those problems with your eyes, to see with your eyes, to under, to, that you will give them the understanding to face that giant to overcome. And when they overcome, that they will give you all the glory and all the praise, Lord, and we, and we thank you for the answered prayers. We thank you for the victories that you give us in our lives, Lord. And I just pray that you keep us humble. And help us to, to keep that focus on you, Lord, so we can be the witness for you, and Lord, so we can be just that we can fulfill your will for our lives, Lord. 
We thank you and we love you. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. Thank you and have a blessed week.